Not long ago, I got a distressed inbox from a clinician who had just caused her first ileotosis. I thought, why not recap on a video I've done previously on how to avoid causing an ileotosis. First, let's understand what causes an ileotosis. There are two muscles that control your upper eyelid. You have your tarsal muscle, which is a smooth muscle, and then the levator palpebrae muscle, which is a normal striated muscle underneath voluntary control. The primary muscle which is affected in an ileotosis is the levator palpebrae muscle. Now, if you Google this muscle and you learn about it in two dimensions, it feels like it is running in the actual eyelid. If you have a look at the Wikipedia page that discusses this muscle, it looks like injecting here will cause an ileotosis. The reality is the bulk of that muscle is actually traveling over the top of the globe right into the back of the orbit. And this is crucial to understand because once you understand that, you realize what the dangerous injection is that actually causes ileotosis. It is all about depth. If you are superficial, you are unlikely to get to that sort of depth. And this is already helping us decide how deep to inject. Now, the next thing to think about is whereabouts is it in relation to your other injections? If you map out all the injections you do in a three area treatment for botulinum toxin, you will see that very few of them are close to the tarsal muscle with the exception of the tail injection of the corrugator. And it's for this reason, this is considered to be one of the most likely injections to cause an ileotosis. So consider being lateral above the pupil, but also deep as a particularly risky injection. Now I actually had a detailed look at this in a cadaver with a needle. If you place a deep injection into the superior orbital area, which is where we inject the tail of the corrugator, it is quite likely that it can actually go straight into the foramen. If you keep pushing this, which I did on the cadaver, it will emerge exactly above the levator palpebrae muscle. So it is often thought that this may be the most likely path of botulinum toxin through the little foramen that is there for the nerve and the artery, passing directly onto the orbit if you inject too deeply. If this is our most dangerous injection point, one way to make your injection safer is not to inject it at all. So you can use the three point injection, which is one over the deepest and strongest part of the corrugator muscle, and then you treat Bracerus. One, two, three injection points of four units, and that will work in a percentage of your patients. Another portion of your patients, perhaps 30% as a guesstimate, would require a little bit of toxin just in the tail of the corrugator here. So you can do two units, some people do four units, but most important of all is that you're not too deep. Given what we've just learned, a small injection that goes into those corrugator insertion points where you lift up the skin and you can see you're relatively superficial will give you an additional layer of protection, protecting the orbit and the levator palpebrae muscle from toxin getting too deep. This is what it would look like. You'd place pressure on the orbital rim because this gives an additional protective layer against toxin traveling into the orbit. A medium depth injection, sometimes squeezed a little bit so that you lift slightly up, not touching the periosteum because the bone is not quite at that level, it's traveling up. Corrugator injection, that's your main one, four units into the corrugator, supporting the orbital rim, and then out. Laterally is where we worry about ileotosis the most, and here you want to be less deep. That's your primary defense. Little dose between two and four units. And then if you need to go very lateral near the insertion point and near the mid pupillary line, this is your most risky. You may want to be most superficial and doing the smallest dose. Quite often I use just two units.